And at number 10, Damon Albarn. Musician Damon Albarn got together to collaborate on some tracks on Adele's 2015 album, 25, but unfortunately did not go as planned, and the pair ended on pretty bad terms. He even said in the interview that he will never collaborate with Adele again. In an interview with The Sun at that time, Albarn said, quote, Adele asked me to work with her and I took the time out for her. And I'm not a producer, so I don't know what is happening really. Will she use any of this stuff? I don't think so. Let's wait and see. The thing is, she's very insecure and she doesn't need to be. She's still so young. Albarn also described her new music as middle of the road. Following his interview, Adele clapped back, saying, quote, I ended up being one of those don't meet your idol moments. The saddest thing was that I was such a big Blur fan growing up, but it was sad and I regret hanging out with him. Albarn later clarified in a different interview that his words were taken out of context and they were misinterpreted to sound mean. But that kind of seems like BS to me and it's clear the pair did not like each other. And at number nine, Jamie Oliver. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver got in a strange feud with Adele after he made some comments about breastfeeding. Oliver spoke about the topic during a radio interview where he said, quote, the UK has the worst breastfeeding in the world and saying, quote, it's easy, it's more convenient, it's more nutritious, it's better, it's free. But this did not sit well with Adele. And during a concert, Adele responded saying, quote, the pressure on us is effing ridiculous and all those people who put pressure on us can go F yourselves, right? Because it's hard. Some of us can't do it. Following the comments, fans put two and two together and Oliver got backlash for mansplaining a woman's issue. And in number eight, Matt Doran. Adele got into a feud with reporter Matt Doran after it was reported that she stormed out of their press interview for her new album once he admitted that he didn't listen to the album in full. Australia's Daily Telegraph revealed the Channel 7's Matt Doran came to London specifically for this 20 to 30 minute interview in an over $600,000 deal. Reportedly halfway through the interview, Adele noticed that he was struggling to express an opinion of his own. Then she flat out asked if he had listened to the album. And when he said no, she walked off and ended the interview early. Sony later refused to allow footage of the interview to be used and Doran was suspended for two weeks. This embarrassing blunder then went viral, with Adele fans roasting Doran online for days. However, Doran later exposed that the whole story was a lie and he was never kicked out of the interview. Rather, the conversation actually went over time. Doran also stood by the contents of the interview and said he is, quote, devastated that her fans are being denied this interview. And at number seven, Taylor Swift. This is another feud that we're not sure is real or not, but it seems there's been some shade thrown between these two singers for years. After Adele beat out Taylor for a Golden Globe in 2013, Adele made a bit of a shady dig when Adele jokingly said that she is a squad, but they aren't models, clearly taking a dig at Taylor's model squad. Then this year it was reported that Taylor Swift was furious that Adele might be stepping into pop music with her new album. A source said, quote, Taylor Swift is not happy that Adele is apparently taking a new direction for her next album because it means that she could be stealing her pop princess crown. Apparently, Swift is giving no help to Adele with this potential crossover either. The source added, quote, should this rivalry go public, it's going to get messy. It's probably best for Taylor to keep her copycat concerns to herself. And then number six, Ernest Owens. Adele got major backlash after she posted a photo in Bantu Knots to celebrate the UK's Notting Hill Carnival. And journalist Ernest Owens was one of the people who did not approve. In the UK, they celebrate something called the Naughty Hill Carnival, where people will share their pride about being a British person with Caribbean descent. Adele shocked the world when she showed up wearing a Jamaican flag, print bikini, and Bantu knots in her hair, a style worn traditionally by black women in the region. Her shocking 100 pound weight loss was easily overshadowed by the backlash that she received, with people calling the move cultural appropriation. After waves of backlash, she told British Vogue, quote, I didn't read the effing room. And in hindsight, she completely understands why the backlash occurred. Adele also decided to not take down the photo, a move which she says was to let people know she was not trying to brush it under the rug. Owens tweeted at the time, quote, if 2020 couldn't get any more bizarre, Adele is giving us Bantu knots and cultural appropriation that nobody asked for. This officially marks all of the top white women in pop as problematic. Hate to see it. Halfway number five, Beyonce. Since Adele took home album of the year at the 2017 Grammys, fans are convinced that Beyonce and Adele do not like each other, mainly because they are very competitive. After Adele won in 2017, instead of Beyonce, fans were really fed up and claimed that Adele was somewhat patronizing in her acceptance speech. On that night, Adele won all five of the awards she was nominated for, while Beyonce only won two of nine of her nominations. During her speech, Adele made sure to shout out Beyonce and say that she believed Beyonce deserved the award more. Although some fans found the moment completely genuine and heartfelt, many did not. 
Some fans claim that if Adele really felt that way, she should have invited Beyonce on stage to say her acceptance speech with her. Some Beyonce fans even claim that Adele could have just denied the award and forced the Grammys to give it to Beyonce. One fan tweeted after the show, quote, even Adele admitted that Beyonce should have won album of the year. Many Beyonce fans think that she did not appreciate being put on blast and the whole thing made Adele look like a white woman savior. And at number four, Peppa Pig. Easily the strangest beef Adele has been in was with Peppa Pig. In an Instagram Live where Adele was promoting her upcoming album, 30, a fan asked if she would ever collaborate with Peppa, and Adele savagely said no. Then later on during an interview with Capital FM, Adele was confronted by Peppa, who called her out for the comments. The interviewers asked Adele about her comments, then showed a clip of a cartoon Peppa saying, quote, Hello Adele, that made me really, really sad when you said you wouldn't collaborate with me. Why not? Don't you like me? Adele was obviously shocked and responded, quote, But Peppa, I regret it. I regret it. I spent three years watching you. I really regret any time you want to go jumping in muddy puddles and sing muddy muddles. I'm with you, babes. I felt terrible the second I said it. So thankfully that beef was cleared up. And at number three, Bruno Mars. Singer and producer Bruno Mars had some eyebrow raising things to say about Adele after they collaborated on her song, All I Ask. He of course sang her praises for her amazing talent, but he also made sure to include that she can be a bit of a diva. He said in the interview, quote, she's a superstar. She walks into the studio, she's got all this attitude, she's a diva, and she's like, I don't wanna do this, I don't like that. And as soon as we hit a couple of chords that she liked, we started rolling, and that's where we got that song from. But of course, he praised how talented that she is, saying that there is a moment that she is in the booth singing when the water started to vibrate. And of course, he would love to work with her again. He said he's just waiting for her to call on him again. It's unclear if he meant that she was a diva in an endearing way, or if he meant to throw some shade her way. And at number two, Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan is known for his controversial opinions on news and pop culture, and his stances on Adele have gotten him in hot water. In November, Pierce published a scathing rant against Adele and her decision to include her son on her latest album, 30, claiming that she shared her son's heartache and pain to promote the last album. Morgan claimed it was hypocritical because Adele had fought for her son's privacy in the past. In his article, Morgan wrote, quote, Sorry Adele, you're a great singer, but sharing your young son's heartache and pain with the entire world to flog your album is shameful and the rank is hypocrisy. Morgan claimed that Adele asked for privacy when it comes to her separation and other personal matters, but then she turns around and exposes those intimate details when it serves her to promote and sell albums. In his article, Morgan wrote, quote, All this hypocrisy is par for the course with today's oversharing celebrities who love to reveal every prudent detail of their lives for commercial gain while simultaneously demanding privacy, adding, quote, this is the same Adele who went to court to protect her son's privacy when he was just one, winning him a substantial five-figure sum in damages over paparazzi photographs. And finally, number one, Simon Konecki. I'm sure that Adele's ex-husband does not hate her, but I'm sure he's not pleased with some of the things that she shared about their marriage in the press or on her latest album. In September of 2019, Adele filed for a divorce from Konecki. When speaking about the marriage, she told Vogue, quote, I was just going through the motions and I wasn't happy. Neither of us did anything wrong. Neither of us hurt each other or anything like that. It was just, I want my son to see me really in love and be loved. It's really important to me. Then when she approached her 30s, she felt she wanted more out of life than what she had at the time. The divorce was hardest for her nine-year-old son, Angelo. Adele added, quote, He had so many simple questions for me that I can't answer because I don't know the answer. Adele's also shared that she thinks her son might hate her for her decision later in life. At number 10, Kiki Palmer. So many people have opinions on the Car Jenners. The way they look, the way they act, their business, everything. A lot of people don't like them for a number of reasons, but actress Kiki Palmer has blatantly come out and talked about why she dislikes the Car Jenners, specifically Kylie. Kiki has shown sympathy in the past for Kylie because of the insecurities that Kylie has professed, but Kiki isn't too fond of how Kylie went about dealing with those insecurities. A lot of the Car Jenners show off their appearances all the time, and many of them have had plastic surgery, but Kiki doesn't seem to like that Kylie flaunted how she changed her appearance like her sisters. The actress believes believes that Kylie went about dealing with her insecurities in the wrong way, and she hates the fact that she's been praised for this paid glow up. In an interview, Kiki spoke out about all of this where she said, quote, In the sense of the Kardashians, it's like, I'm going to show you so much perfect and be everything a woman should be or everything a man would like or love. Specifically in the situation of Kylie, where you've had a young girl people have seen on television since she was a kid and they literally told her she was so ugly, the ugly person in the family. She went and did apparently everything the world deemed as beautiful. The even crazier part is that everybody loves her for it. 
end quote. Kiki has deemed Kylie inauthentic and that's why she dislikes her so much. And at number 9, Kylie Minogue. Before there was Kylie Jenner, Kylie Minogue was the most famous Kylie. But in 2015, Jenner tried to trademark the name Kylie and Minogue fought back. The Australian pop star shaded Jenner when she tried to trademark their first name. According to the US Patent and Trademark Office, in 2015 Jenner tried to register Kylie in the US for advertising services and endorsement services. But Kylie Minogue's team filed their own charges to ensure the trademark did not go through. Minogue claimed it would quote, damage her own reputation. In the legal documents, Minogue's team classified Jenner as a quote, secondary reality television personality known for her quote, photographic exhibitionism and controversial posts on social media. Very savage. Then Minogue tweeted, quote, Hello, my name is Kylie, hashtag light years, insinuating that she was here way before Jenner. After this whole debacle, it's clear the two do not like each other. At number 8, Madison Beer. There are a handful of people in Hollywood who have their grievances with Kylie's beauty brand. In the past, she's been accused of copying the same packaging as Jeffree Star's makeup brand, but she's also had some beef with Madison Beer because the singer accused Kylie of stealing Madison's purple palette idea from back in 2017. In October of 2017, Kylie released her purple palette from her Kylie Cosmetics brand, and soon after the collection was made public, Madison shaded Kylie on Instagram, alleging that Kylie betrayed her. Madison posted on Instagram saying quote, when people fully steal your idea and they come out with what was supposed to be a collab, whack, end quote. Though the collab between Madison and Kylie was never confirmed, Madison appeared to have hinted at it back in March of 2017 when talking to paparazzi. I could imagine how hurt you would feel if you worked on something just for it all to fall through with you but still be sold. That would be a serious punch to the gut. When a follower called Madison out on being salty about the whole ordeal and that she didn't invent purple eyeshadow, the singer clapped back saying, quote, You sound very unintelligent. Who in their right mind would think they invented an eyeshadow color or shade? That is not at all in any way what I said or even slightly implied. End quote. Apparently, Kylie and Madison were friends before all of this happened, so I wonder if they're over it now or if that ruined their friendship. And at number 7, Paris Jackson. Kendall and Kylie got tons of backlash when they released a series of vintage t-shirts for their clothing line and photos of legends like Notorious B.I.G., Tupac Shakur, and the, the Doors and Ozzy Osbourne were beside their own on the shirts. Tons of celebrities called out the sisters for their tone deaf decision, including Paris Jackson, the daughter of the late Michael Jackson. Paris took to Twitter and wrote, quote, As a huge fan of Zeppelin, The Doors, Floyd, I mean these bands literally helped shape who I am today. I can't condone this fashion. Legends like these who completely changed our world today, not just the music world, should be respected and honored, not turned into this. Pink Floyd is not Chanel, Led Zeppelin is not Michael Kors, Metallica is not Givenchy. Don't get it twisted. Hashtag bands not brands and hashtag respect music. Along with getting tons of heat, the sisters were also slapped with multiple lawsuits, so they decided to stop selling the shirts shortly after their release. At number 6, Selena Gomez. Another celebrity who seems to have had beef with Kylie is former Disney star Selena Gomez. Turns out that Selena had an on and off again friendship with the Jenner sisters and it all stemmed from Justin Bieber. During the time that Selena and Justin were a thing, Selena started feeling a little iffy about Kylie specifically because she thought that Kylie was flirting with Justin. Selena and Kylie apparently got into a confrontation in 2014 because of it and it all went down at Justin's house. According to sources, what happened that evening was that Kylie allegedly, quote, sent sexy pics of herself to Justin, and that's what started the fight. Selena saw the pictures on Justin's phone and she freaked out and immediately left, end quote. The source also commented on the Jenner sisters saying, quote, Kylie and Kendall live in such a fantasy world with what the show has turned their family into. At the end of the day, Selena was just there to be a part of the show and enhance their brand rather than being legit friends. Thankfully, Selena realized that she was being used and got out. End quote. Some sources also claim that Selena stopped being friends with the Jenners because of their use of substances, drinking, and partying, but the Jenners have denied those claims. Halfway number 5, Lourdes Leon. Lourdes Leon, daughter of Madonna, dissed Kylie after Lourdes was invited to Kylie's birthday party in 2015. Apparently, she finds the Kardashian family vile and was horrified about the invite. A source revealed that Lourdes shaded Kylie over her social media activity and selfie taking. After she received the invite, a source exposed, quote, She couldn't believe Kylie thought that she'd be receptive to a party invite and has completely ignored her. As far as Lourdes is concerned, she's not going to lower herself to even responding. Adding that Lourdes is very picky about who she spends her time with and Kylie doesn't make the cut. 
The source added that Lourdes' friends are, quote, much more interested in changing the world than in taking selfies. And in my opinion, you must really hate someone if the thought of them inviting you to their birthday leaves you horrified. At number 4, Amber Rose. The Cardenners have caused a lot of tension in the past in case of their relationships. There's been so much drama with cheating, rumors, babies, and so much more. So it's not surprising to know that Kylie is hated because of relationship quarrels. Amber Rose has had some harsh things to say about Kylie in the past, especially when it came to her relationship with rapper Tyga. Tyga had left Black China, the mother of his son, for Kylie, and Amber did not approve of that at all. During a radio interview, Amber spoke out about that drama when she said, quote, She's a baby, she needs to go to bed at 7 o'clock and relax. That's ridiculous. Tyga should be ashamed of himself. That's how I feel, for sure. He has a beautiful woman and a baby and left that all for a 16 year old who just turned 17. End quote. Amber wasn't the only one to comment on Kylie and Tyga's relationship, but her commentary definitely had some heat. In at number 3, Jeffree Star. Jeffree Star has been coming for Kylie publicly ever since she came out with an online makeup company that was a competitor to Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Their feud is totally one sided, but I'm sure that Kylie has seen all the shade that Jeffree has dished out. Back when Jeffree was famous for his makeup reviews, he reviewed Kylie Cosmetics on multiple occasions, and more often than not, he trashed her products. When reviewing her over $300 brush set, he called it cheap dollar store product. Jeffree and Shane Dawson also trashed Kylie's skin in their review, where they called the products drying, irritating, and overpriced. Jeffree even shaded Kylie's Forbes cover, where she was declared the world's youngest self made billionaire. He said, quote, I declined the feature, so they had to pick someone. At number two, Amanda Stenberg. The most common scandal that the Cardenners seem to get involved in is something involving cultural appropriation. Many of the Cardenners have been accused of appropriating black culture and black fishing, and Kylie seems to be one of the the worst offenders when it comes to these things. The internet has got really fired up when Kylie was seen wearing cornrows, and actress Amanda Stenberg went off on Kylie for it. The Hunger Games actress tweeted saying, quote, When you appropriate black features and culture but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism, hashtag white girls do it better. End quote. On top of that, Amanda also posted a video titled Don't Cash Crop on My Cornrow, explaining that, quote, the line between cultural appropriation and cultural exchange is always going to be blurred, but here's the thing. Appropriation occurs when a style leads to racist generalizations or stereotypes where it originated but deemed high fashion, cool, or funny when the privileged take it for themselves. End quote. Amanda already took a disliking towards Kylie after that, but that didn't seem to do much because she kept posting in cornrows after that. And finally, at number one, Black China. There is absolutely no doubt in anyone's mind that Black China hates Kylie Jenner. I think pretty much anyone would hate the woman that your boyfriend left you for. Back in 2014, Black China was in a long term relationship with Tyga. The pair even had a son together. But that all changed when Kylie came into the picture, and Tyga left China for a 16 year old Kylie. Kylie and Tyga dated for two years before splitting. At this time, tons of China's friends and family were shading Kylie for breaking up a family, including Amber Rose. Apparently, Kim Kardashian was even friends with China while she was with Tyga. And Kim said that China was devastated when she found out the Tyga was leaving her and their three year old son King Cairo for Kylie. Years later, China would get in a long term relationship with Rob Kardashian, Kylie's half brother, and have a child with him. Some even speculate that Black China got with Rob purely out of spite so she could make Kylie's life hell. Starting off this countdown, we have Miley Cyrus. Apparently, Miley Cyrus has never been a fan of Mariah Carey. In a 2016 Elle cover story, Miley said, and I quote, I've never really been a fan because it's so much about Mariah Carey. That's part of her shtick. I can see through it. That's part of what makes her a gay icon. Like, it's about Mimi, it's about what she's wearing, and it's about her. Miley continued on saying, What I make isn't about me. It's about sharing my story. It's about someone being connected to what I'm saying. That's why you don't see me like on the side of buses selling shit. I mean, what am I gonna do? Sell makeup? And that was a jab towards Mariah and her deal with MAC Cosmetics holiday line. Yikes, Miley went off. Coming in at number nine, we have Madonna. This might just be the worst insult someone could ever receive. Back in the 1990s, Madonna said that she'd rather kill herself than be Mariah Carey. She then proceeded on saying that Mariah wasn't the brightest. Continuing on, in 1996, in an interview with Spin, Madonna said that Mariah's work is anything other than serious art. 
Wow, Madonna did not hold back at all. In our eighth spot, we have Tommy Motola. Tommy Motola is an American music executive and producer. He was the chairman and CEO of Sony Music Entertainment for nearly 15 years. Now he's in charge of Casablanca Records with Universal. He is also Mariah Carey's ex husband. After the two split, things got messy for Mariah. He literally tried to sabotage her and destroy her career. He must have really hated her in order for him to do that. Like for example, the whole JLo and Mariah feud is said to be started because of him. It started when JLo released a song with a sample that Mariah was already using. Another time, Mariah was planning to do a slow duet with Ja Rule, but JLo managed to do one first before her. This was all arranged by Tommy behind the scenes. It got so bad that Mariah actually had to end her contract with Sony. In our seventh spot, we have Nick Cannon. Although the ex pair share kids together, they still aren't on the best of terms. In an interview, Nick said that Mariah is still mad at him for some things that he has done in the past. Plus, just recently, when Nick got in trouble for making anti Semitic comments, Mariah threw shade at him through a social media post. On Instagram, she posted a photo of her dog and captioned it, Life's rough. She posted this hours after Nick got blasted. So people were like, ooh, that's for sure shade towards him. In our sixth spot, we have Demi Lovato. According to Demi Lovato, Mariah Carey is rude, and that's why Demi doesn't like her. It started back in June of 2016. A meme was going around showing Mariah next to Ariana Grande. The photo was captioned when you order it online versus when it arrives, suggesting that Ariana is nothing compared to Mariah. Well, Demi saw this and commented, You got it the wrong way around, honey. Later, Demi provided an explanation for what they meant by this. Demi said, Mariah is a legend and so talented, but constantly disses people. It's nasty the way she treats Jennifer. I'm afraid to say shit. The woman is mean for no reason. Extremely talented? Yes. Superhuman? Possibly. Unnecessarily rude? Absolutely. Mariah didn't take this lightly and she played the whole I don't know them card and then told Demi to introduce themselves and share their opinions face to face. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Jenny McCarthy. After Mariah Carey's New Year's Eve failed performance, actress Jenny McCarthy had much to say on her Sirius XM radio show. She went on to say that Mariah blaming the production company for her performance was incredibly insulting. Apparently, Mariah didn't even participate in sound check, where she could have tested out if everything was working properly. So that's on her. Furthermore, Jenny said, and I quote, I mean, her voice is not there anymore. I don't believe there was a problem with her inner ears. I just don't. I think she used it as an excuse. You heard me correctly. Jenny thinks that Mariah was never going to be able to sing in the first place. So she made up excuses that her earpiece wasn't working. I'm not sure what Mariah said in response to that, but knowing her, she probably threw some shade right back at Jenny. Coming in our fourth spot, we have Christina Aguilera. In 2006, Christina Aguilera revealed to GQ an unpleasant experience she had with Mariah at a party. She said, and I quote, One time we were at a party and I think she got really drunk, and she had some really derogatory things to say to me. That's not good. But of course, Mariah responded and threw a lot of shade back at Christina. Mariah said, I had hoped that Christina was in a better place now than the last time I saw her. When she showed up uninvited at one of my parties and displayed questionable behavior. She continued on saying, It is sad yet predictable that she would use my name at this time to reinvent past incidents for her promotional gain. It is in my heart to forgive and I will keep her in my prayers. Hot damn, Mariah. If you come for her, it's pretty clear that she's gonna just come right back at ya. In our third spot, we have. Nicki Minaj. Mariah and Nicki's beef was very public. It happened when the two were judges together on American Idol season 12. The two came for each other multiple times on the show. Multiple. But before the first episode even aired, two clips from the show surfaced online. One is a video where Nicki just snaps. She says, and I quote, I told them I'm not putting up with her effing highness no more. I'm not gonna sit here every effing minute to have you come down and harass me every minute every day. So we already knew that having them as judges together was going to be juicy. Plus there were so many times throughout the season where the two would just make snarky remarks at each other. There even was a rumor going around that Nikki threatened Mariah with a gun, but Nikki and the producers denied these claims. In our second spot we have Eminem. 
This feud seems so random, like Mariah and Eminem, like it's it's a random duo. It all started in 2002 when Eminem made reference to Mariah in his song Superman. In the song he says and I quote, what you trying to be my new wife, what you Mariah fly through twice. He continues on saying I beg Mariah to take me back. But according to Mariah, the two never dated or hooked up. She said they talked on the phone and hung out around four times. A year later, Mariah was on tour and parodied Eminem. In her song Clown, she has the lines, and I quote, You should have never imitated we were lovers, when you know very well we never even touched each other. Then in 2005, Eminem responded by playing voicemails from Mariah. So on and so on, it just keeps going on. Eminem's all like, babe, we had something going on. And Mariah's like, nah, nice try. And in our number one spot, we have Jennifer Lopez, but we don't know her. This has to be the most famous Mariah feud of all time. It all started back in the early 2000s when Mariah was interviewed by a foreign TV station. One of the questions they asked was about several pop stars, her rivals, and what she thought about them. She begins with Beyonce and she says that she's nice and a good writer. When asked about Jennifer Lopez though, uh, she says, I don't know her. And that my friends is how the I don't know her Mariah meme was created. Over the years the two have both subtly thrown shade at each other while still downplaying the feud. At number 10, Eminem. What happens when one rapper crosses another? Well, a feud begins. We've seen this type of thing before with a number of rappers like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, Kanye West and Drake, and Drake and Meek Mill, and just so many others. But another toxic duo we can include here is Eminem and Machine Gun Kelly, because their feud has also been pretty big. It all started back all the way in 2012, when MGK was 22, and he tweeted about Eminem's then 16 year old daughter Haley. MGK tweeted calling Haley hot in quote, the most most respectful way possible because M is king. Now even though Kelly meant to be respectful, he still crossed the line with that tweet and so a feud began. Because of this initial tweet, MGK's music got banned on the radio for a while and as it would, it made him angry, especially with Eminem. So in 2018, MGK made a song with Tech 9 where he shaded the rapper and then shortly after that, Eminem hit back with his own song shading his rival in return. From that point, it was just a lot of messy back and forth, talking trash about each other in interviews and in music. Really, at one point, this beef just kind of got exhausting and people just started speculating that this feud was just fabricated because they're both signed to the same label. It's been pretty quiet between them since early 2020, so maybe this toxicity has subsided, but you can never really be too sure with these two. At number 9, Conor McGregor. Now this beef here is what got a lot of people scratching their heads because it seemed to have just come out of the blue and it left a lot of us feeling a little confused. At the VMAs this year, while walking the red carpet, there was quite the altercation between MGK and Conor McGregor. The rapper was at the VMAs for a performance and because he was up for an award, which he later won by the way, and Conor, well, he was just there for his buddy Bieber. Anyway, they were both on the red carpet at the beginning of the evening and an altercation broke out. Based on some of the footage that was posted of the event, Conor appeared to have thrown a drink at MGK and then proceeded to try and fight him. It was really dramatic and no one knows why the altercation even happened in the first place. It was first rumored that they got into a fight because MGK refused to take a picture with McGregor, but the rapper later denied those allegations. It was such a bizarre situation that no one really has any answers for, but clearly there's some kind of bad blood there, so if anyone really knows why that is, please let me know. Now before I carry on talking about people who dislike Machine Gun Kelly, I would first like to take a quick moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, because your engagement really does help the channel grow and we really appreciate your support. At number 8, Gabriel Rodriguez. Now this next story I'm going to tell you about is one that I had no idea about until my roommate told me about it, so shout out to Blake for being the real MVP and saving this list. Basically, there was an altercation between the rapper and his bodyguards and an actor by the name of Gabriel Rodriguez at a bar because Rodriguez was mad at MGK for that tweet about Eminem's daughter that I told you guys about earlier. After the actor harassed the rapper at the bar, he was soon kicked out, but he caught up to MGK and his crew later on that night. Still angry, the actor and MGK got into a verbal altercation and then the actor said that he would fight the rapper's bodyguards, which is exactly what ended up happening. The actor got pummeled and charges were filed against the bodyguards, but this man was really determined to get into the ring so to speak with MGK because he said that he would drop all charges if he could fight the rapper one on one. 
Either way, this matter was taken care of through a lawsuit and with monetary compensation, but I wouldn't be surprised if that actor still wants to fight Machine Gun Kelly. At number 7, Jeff Lewis. It seems like Machine Gun Kelly isn't just loud on stage, but also at home. You would think that he would put this loud rocker persona to rest while at home in his free time, but according to his neighbors, that couldn't be further from the truth. His neighbors have said that he's known to host loud and crazy parties, disturbing much of his community, and he's also known to have joy rides with his friends on the block. Neighbors have also complained about loud motorcycles revving their engines at inappropriate times of the night, and his guests have also spilled over into neighboring properties from time to time. It's also been reported that during parties, Kelly's guests have parked in neighbors' driveways and have blocked many of the neighbors' cars as well. It really seems as though he doesn't have a sense of respect for other people's properties or quiet hours. This all caused a feud between the rapper and his neighbor TV personality Jeff Lewis, who exposed Machine Gun Kelly for his nightly shenanigans. Luckily, they were able to bury the hatchet after the rapper bought Jeff a bottle of champagne as a truce. But what I really want to know is did the shenanigans actually stop, or did Jeff just get over it? For the sake of his frenemy. On number six, G Easy. Okay, now that we've talked about some non music related beefs with Machine Gun Kelly, let's circle back to this Eminem feud because this is where a lot of the hate really stems from. When it comes to feuds like this, you always see people taking sides, and so this is how MGK made some enemies along the way since a number of other artists sided with Eminem on this matter, including rapper G Easy, and this made things a little messy. See, G Easy already had a mild amount of hate for MGK after beach photos surfaced of MGK and Halsey spending the day together. At the time, Halsey and G -Eazy Easy were on a break, but as far as Yeezy was concerned, that was still his girl, and Kelly crossed the line. So when this Eminem versus MGK stuff started to heat up, G Easy obviously sided with the opposition. As we all know by now, though, rappers just can't let things rest, and so MGK did a freestyle rap during an interview and shaded G Easy, and then G Easy clapped back with his own diss track for MGK. You know, this back and forth rapper drama is incredibly exhausting. <laughs> Between them fighting over Halsey and picking sides in a completely different fight, things got messy, but the bottom line here is that they really don't like each other. Get away from me, Fly. Don't make me square up with you. <laughs> At number 5, Halsey. But speaking of Halsey, we can't forget to include her side of the narrative here. Tying into this beef with Jeezy and MGK, Halsey was sort of stuck in the middle of this. She sort of had two people fighting over them, just adding to the overall messiness of the feud. Though I wouldn't say that she downright hates Machine Gun Kelly, there was a point where she certainly wasn't impressed by the way that he was acting. Halsey responded to all the drama that was going on at the time by calling Machine Gun Kelly, quote, Pathetic. This is in response to the claims that MGK made during an interview where he said that he had quote, smashed Halsey after allegedly dating in 2017. This all seems to be water under the bridge now since MGK and Halsey collaborated on the song Forget Me Too that was released last year, but I'm going to assume that it took a little while for things to cool off between them before coming back together to work. At number 4, Miller McCormick. Machine Gun Kelly recently made a new enemy, and that enemy is Miller McCormick, the brother of the late Mac Miller. The rapper was set to start production on a new film titled Good News, but after facing criticism from McCormick, it was looking like the film would start production untitled. The film in question was supposed to be about an up and coming musician who struggled with deep rooted personal issues and is inspired by a lot of young rappers' origin stories. Now, the problem that Miller McCormick had with this film in particular was the fact that the title was the same as the last song that was released by Mac Miller posthumously. That, combined with the strange similarity to Mac's life, just didn't sit right with him, and he had to make that known. McCormick seemed to criticize MGK's movie on his Instagram where he said quote, F your movie, at least change the title. This sparked a number of others also calling for changes to the film, and this later reached producers who vowed to change the film's title. Now we don't know if all of this similarity to Mac Miller was intentional or not, but either way, MGK got in some hot water and probably lost some respect from McCormick. At number 3, Corey Taylor. Recently, Machine Gun Kelly went through sort of a metamorphosis of music, so to speak, reinventing his sound. The rapper recently released an album that was more punk rock alternative sounding, and a lot of people had opinions on it as they do. One person who really had nothing nice to say about MGK's new sound was Slipknot frontman Corey Taylor, as he shared his thoughts on artists in the rock genre in a recent interview. Essentially, Corey said that artists these days are ripping off their sound from other more original artists, and he also took a jab at MGK when he said, quote, I hate the artists who failed in one genre and decided to go rock. 
I think he knows who he is, but that's another story. I'm the worst, I hate everything, and people are used to that with me though. That seemed like quite a loaded comment at MGK, and there was a lot of theory behind it as well. Either way, this new sound that MGK is working with really seems to be paying off for him since he recently won a VMA for best alternative video for his song My Ex's Best Friend, which is actually a banger if you haven't checked that one out already. <laughs> At number two, Summer Rae. Even though Machine Gun Kelly is thriving with his girlfriend Megan Fox, apparently there's some alleged drama surrounding their relationship and his former relationship with Instagram model Summer Rae. This influencer recently alleged that MGK cheated on her with Megan while he was away filming for the movie Midnight in the Switchgrass. That film set is where Megan and MGK first met. Summer, going into more detail, said, quote, I don't really feel bad saying that because he did kind of cheat on me with Megan Fox if you look at the timeline. Summer also alleged that she had confronted Kelly about why she was told that she wasn't allowed to be on the set for one of his music videos. MGK said that it was because of COVID, but she later found out that it was because Megan was playing the rapper's love interest in the video. Overall, Summer was just left to feeling a little betrayed at the end of it all, so I don't really blame her for having some kind of negative energy towards Machine Gun Kelly. And finally, at number one, Brian Austin Green. Now, the one person who I feel would really hate Machine Gun Kelly the most is Megan Fox's ex-husband, Brian Austin Green. Although he tried to make people think that things are all fine and dandy with him, and that most of his hostility is more so directed to Megan, I feel like deep down there's still some hatred there for Kelly, since he's the one that Megan fell in love with first after him. Ever since Megan and Machine Gun Kelly went public with their relationship, Brian has spoken out about the relationship a few times, but a lot of people feel as though he's hiding his true feelings. In one interview, when asked about how he found out about the relationship, he gave very few details and simply said, quote, I found out in my own way, and that's as much detail as I'll give you on that one. Something just isn't right there, but I feel as though in time his true feelings will come out, and I feel like it might be a little messy too. Maybe a diss track will also come out of it. Kicking off this list at number 10 is Miley Cyrus. If you followed her past relationship with Liam Hemsworth at all, then you probably remember the alleged love triangle between Miley, Liam, and Jennifer. That's not a triangle, that's a diamond. Rumors spread like wildfire when the Hunger Games first came out, with people suggesting that Jen and Liam had something between them off the big screen. For years, no one really knew if it was true or not, but then Jen confirmed it for fans in December of 2015. She went on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen and admitted to making out with Liam off set. Andy asked her if they have ever kissed when the cameras weren't rolling, and Jennifer's response was, Liam and I grew up together. Liam's real hot. What would you have done. Yeah, I have. Reports say this is actually why Miley and Liam got back together after their first initial split because Miley got jealous and thought she might lose him to Jen. Now, how much of this is true, we won't really know, but Jen confirmed that she and Liam had a little something something, and that is something I've always wondered personally. So, glad it was confirmed. Up next, number nine is Jared Leto. She had some sort of weird tension with the actor back in 2014, and it all came out at the Oscar Awards. She took the stage to present the award for best actor and called out someone in the audience by asking, what, is this funny? Turns out the mystery audience member was Jared Leto. He explained what happened later on and said that Ellen DeGeneres was on the sidelines making jokes that had him, his mom, and his brother all cracking up and laughing. When asked about if he felt bad interrupting Jennifer unintentionally, he made sarcastic comments like, I guess we don't have any manners. To top it all off, he was then asked about Jen's famous fall when she tumbled up the stage to accept her award at the Oscars, and Jared responded by saying, you know, I'm starting to wonder if this is a bit of an act. We're not sure what the tension is between them, um, but there is a lot of sarcasm between the two of them. They both just seem like very sarcastic people though, in general. Cruising into number eight is Joan Rivers. Back in November 2013, Jen did an interview with the Yahoo CEO, Marissa Mayer, and was asked about body positivity. One man asked her a question on behalf of his daughter and said, having experienced body image criticism in Hollywood, what is your advice to young girls dealing with the same treatment from their peers and your response to those who judge others based on appearances? Jen responded by saying, screw those people, and went on to call out Joan Rivers' show, Fashion Police. She called out the show and said that shows like that are showing younger generations of young people to judge other people based on things like their appearance and that it is wrong. Joan wasn't too impressed with her comment and she took her thoughts to Twitter. Some of her tweets said, it's 
It's funny how Jennifer Lawrence loved the show during awards season when we were complimenting her every single week. She actually even went on to make a joke about Jen's famous Oscar fall and said that she tripped over her own arrogance. Shots fired. Although I don't fully agree with that show either. You're literally judging someone on their appearance. <laughs> That's the entire show. Making his way into number seven is Spencer Pratt. Seems like a really random feud since they come from two totally different worlds, one being a Hollywood actor and another coming from MTV reality shows. But in 2017, she landed the cover of Vogue and during her interview, she said that her house was flooded with crystals. She said when she first moved in, there were crystals everywhere and she asked to get rid of them ASAP because she hates them. She said, please get rid of these. I don't want people to come over here and think I'm a crazy crystal person. This is where Spencer Pratt came in. He is one of those crazy crystal people as she called them. After the Vogue interview was out, he went on the defensive and announced that he felt personally attacked by her comments. He did an interview with The Morning Breath and said, she was talking about me in Vogue. Like 100%, I'm the crazy crystal person she's clowning, so I'll see her. We'll bump into each other at the Beverly Hills Hotel like I see all the A-listers and they run from me. Honestly, I don't think she was talking about you. I don't think she cares. <laughs> really, like in the Vogue interview, I don't think she's thinking of Spencer Pratt. No offense. In spot number six is Chloe Sevigny. Now I know I probably said that wrong, um, so just forgive me and move on from it, okay? The actress didn't hold back when sharing her thoughts on Jennifer Lawrence and was honest about it during an interview in 2015. She sat down with V Magazine and asked if she ever worries about being typecast. After admitting that she does, she explained herself and said, they'll have a really peppy funny girl on the talk show rounds and everybody adores her and loves her and wants to be her and then so many more people want to watch the movie or TV show. She then went on to name a couple of A-listers who she admires and one that she could do without. That one? It's Jennifer Lawrence. Her exact words were, Jennifer Lawrence, I find annoying, too crass. We're not sure why she targeted Jen in the interview. No reports surfaced about them having any kind of tension towards one another. So it still remains a mystery. The amount of times I've been called annoying in my life, I just take it as a compliment at this point. Halfway through at number five is Donald Trump Jr. Does he even count as a celebrity? Probably not, I don't know. But this is still a fun story that I wanted to include. I'm sure being the son of the former president who caused a ton of controversy would often have you in the middle of feuds for anyone who didn't like your dad. Jennifer told Oprah that she would want to meet Donald Trump and said, I've got a pretty good speech. And it ends with a martini to the face. I have something to say for all of them. I watch different characters on the news and I'm like, you just wait. Not too long after that, Donald Trump Jr. had something to say to her. He went on Twitter and shared a link to the article with the headline, Jennifer Lawrence, if I meet Trump, it'll end with a martini to the face and he fired back and said, I'm pretty sure that's not how it would end. Jen really didn't seem too bothered by his tweet and uh, she didn't bother tweeting back, which is probably for the best. Taking over spot number four is Kim Kardashian. This one seemed like a lot of miscommunication or an issue that was never an issue, but the media made it look like one. I'm still not really sure. Jen has made it clear for a long time now that she's obsessed with the Kardashians and she even started having a friendship with Kris Jenner. According to a source who spoke to Radar Online, Kim started to have enough of Jen's attention. Reports claim that Kim went into a jealous rage over the close relationship that was developing between her mom and Jen. The source said, I quote, Kim was always Chris's favorite until Jennifer crashed the scene. She was waltzing into the family's world, acting like a superstar and upsetting the order with her loud chaos. Chris says she's a hoot and treats her like the blonde daughter she never had. The sunshine walks with Jennifer in Chris's eyes and Kim is fed up and doesn't know what to do do. No one is sure if any of this is true because things seem to be okay between them when Jennifer interviewed Kim on Jimmy Kimmel Live when she took over his show. It seemed very normal to me, so, but that could always just be an act. I'm really not sure. Step in number three spot is Lala Kent. It's no secret that Jen speaks her mind and doesn't normally beat around the bush, but people were surprised to see some of the comments she made on Watch What Happens Live regarding Lala Kent. During the interview, she called her a C word because I cannot say that word, but apparently it was in a joking manner. Whether it was a joke or not, Kent didn't take too kindly to it and went on Twitter to talk about it. She sent out a bunch of tweets that have since been deleted. A month after, she went on a podcast to talk about it and she made comments saying Jen's last two films were fails and said she's the type of chick who would give Harvey Weinstein favors for roles. Honestly, that was just the tip of the iceberg of the comments she made. She went in very hard on the actress, even picking apart her appearance. However, Jen 
Jen still stands by the fact that she was joking in her initial interview. I mean, I don't get the joke. <laughs> when I'm joking, I don't use that word, but okay. Next up at number two, we have JLo. This feud was never really a feud, but people didn't know that right away until JLo cleared it up once the media had turned it into something. During a visit to The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon back in 2014, Jennifer Lawrence treated the audience to a party story that included Jimmy and JLo. She revealed that she was drunk and she and Jimmy both saw JLo and they said they wanted to ask her to dance. So they made a plan that they would do a spin and say, dance with us. Turns out Jimmy chickened out, so Jen was left to do it on her own, but she got the cold shoulder from JLo. She did the spin, asked her to dance, and JLo replied with, no, no, I think I'm gonna observe. Obviously, Jen was devastated, as I would be. So the media ran with that story. But JLo cleared things up with Access Hollywood and said that she told Jen, I'm good right here, only because it was really crowded at the moment, so she just literally wanted to stay right there in that area. She cleared it up though by saying that she would have loved to dance with Jen. So kind of a big misunderstanding. In the number one spot is Lindsay Lohan. In December 2015, while promoting Joy on the Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Jen stirred up some controversy with a dig at Lindsay. Colbert praised her for being a star who's willing to talk about the things that aren't so glamorous and asked her about getting sick while shooting Joy in Boston. Jen candidly talked about how she got a stomach virus and was puking a lot. During her story time, she said, I just keep going until eventually my body is just like, if we don't make her barf or pass out, she won't stop. I get like Lindsay Lohan grade exhaustion, but without any drugs or alcohol. Immediately afterwards, Lindsay's sister Aliana jumped to her defense on Twitter and wrote, I never breathe life into negativity, but I stand by my family. Disappointed in Jennifer Lawrence, not cool. Lindsay ended up chiming in saying, thank you sister, maybe who you're referring to should learn to support others. Lindsay's mom then later told Entertainment Tonight that they have all been a fan of Jennifer's and her movies and that it was very disappointing to see her trash talk Lindsay like that. I mean, I agree. Not a cool comment. At number 10, Bill Maher. I'm sure we are all familiar with how outspoken Bill Maher is. He said some things in the past that people have no doubt taken offense to, but after one comment that he made, it seems as though he's made an enemy with James Corden, and now they just don't like each other. Back in 2019, Bill made some offensive comments about weight, where he said, quote, Fat shaming doesn't need to end, it needs to make a comeback. Some amount of shame is good. Shame is the first step in reform, end quote. When James saw this, he took the first eight minutes of his late show episode to discuss the comments that Bill made, where he said, quote, So I sat at home and I'm watching this, and all I could think of was, like, oh man, somebody needs to say something about this. If only there was someone with a platform who knew what it was really like to be overweight, and then I realized, oh, that's me. There's a common and insulting misconception that fat people are stupid and lazy and we're not, end quote. Bill later responded to James's criticisms of his comments, essentially telling him that he was wrong to not shame people for their appearance, but he was pretty heated. People often have opposing views, but it looks like this is a feud that they won't really come out of. At number nine, Jack Allison. Jack Allison is a member of the Writers Guild of America and used to write for Jimmy Kimmel's show back in the day, so he knows his way around late night TV. So when he found out about the shady things that James was doing on his show, he had to call him out for it and it was not pretty. According to Jack, he went to a WGA meeting for late night writers and James showed up to said meeting to advocate for a lower pay grade for late night writers. Doesn't really sound like something to advocate for since it's affecting people's livelihoods, right? Jack alleged that since James showed up to the meeting without any other staffers from his show, that James made that trip to the meeting just for this request. Jack also alleged that James wanted to hire writers assistants for 13 week periods so that he didn't have to pay them as much as a full time contractor. He didn't think that this was fair at all and so he decided to expose James on Twitter. James fired back online saying that this was all untrue, but Jack stuck to his story. I guess he really had it out for James because of how unfairly he wanted to treat his staff and honestly, I can't blame him. Now before I carry on with this list, I would like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far because it really does help the channel out and we appreciate your support. At number 8, Ricky Gervais. It's a common thing for comedians to take jabs at other comedians. It's really just part of the culture of comedy, but I feel like when it comes to Ricky Gervais and James Corden, the jabs that he makes aren't just for laughs, but there's actual hate fueling them as well. Even though they both rose to fame in similar ways, both getting their start on British television, then making their way into movies and hosting, Ricky still seems to have a distaste for James, and he makes that apparent at every moment he can by making jokes about the late night TV host. This first started back in 2009 when James portrayed Ricky on his show. 
I guess Ricky wasn't a fan of the way that he was played on TV because since then, he's been a little hostile towards James. One source commented on Ricky's feelings towards James when they said, quote, Ricky is now somewhat obsessed, attacking James when his jokes fall flat and poking fun of his size, end quote. In recent years, Ricky has also made a few jabs at Corden's jokes about Harvey Weinstein as well as James's role in the movie Cats. At number 7, Ricky Whittle. Actor Ricky Whittle, best known for his roles on The 100 and American Gods, isn't a fan of James Corden after he called the late night host out for comments that he made about a show that the two of them had once starred in. Ricky used to be on a British soap opera called Holly Oaks, and back in 2000, James was a guest star on one of the episodes. Years later, when asked about his time on the show, James had nothing positive to say about it. He told sources about his experience on the show, saying, quote, I'd actually rather die than go back. It's effing awful. It just breeds all these people walking around in this chicken in a basket fame, talking about going to LA, you know? End quote. Ricky did not appreciate the shade that James threw at the show that gave them both their start, and so he clapped back at James where he said, quote, It's very childish that he's slating the place where he came from, the place that made him. Good luck to him. I hope he doesn't bump into us on a night out. End quote. I think it's safe to say that Ricky is not a fan at all. At number 6, Artie Lang. Comedian Artie Lang seems to have a lot to say about a handful of Hollywood stars, especially those who have been associated with Howard Stern. Artie and Howard once worked together when he served as something of a sidekick to Stern on The Howard Stern Show back in 2001 to 2009, but he was forced to leave the show due to his substance abuse issues. It seems like the comedian carried that grudge with him for a long time because he really doesn't have anything nice to say about Howard or anyone else that he's worked with. For example, James Corden. Back in 2016, during Artie's podcast called Artie Quitter, the comedian started ripping on Stern saying that he doesn't like how his comedy has changed from being more brash and abrasive to being more celebrity friendly, but then somehow he got into ripping on James Corden as well since he was a guest on Howard's show not too long before this episode of Artie's podcast. The comedian started making comments about James saying, quote, When James Corden opens his fat effing mouth to do karaoke in a car, something that wouldn't be effing funny to the secretaries at an accounting firm and gets an Emmy for it, I'm allowed to say that he sucks, end quote. Those were some harsh words for someone who I don't think has ever been personally associated with, so I guess this is just him projecting his anger onto James, but the bottom line here is that he's certainly not a fan. At number 5, Liam Gallagher. I think that the one thing that James Corden is best known for is his carpool karaoke segment on his late night show. Over the series of episodes he's done, he's sung with everyone from One Direction to Adele to Migos and more. But even though the show reaches out to many artists, some of them have refused to participate in the segment, like Liam Gallagher for example. Liam is the former singer for the band Oasis and he told GQ magazine back in 2017 about how he was invited to film an episode of Carpool Karaoke with James Corden and he flat out refused. Going more in depth into why he refused, Liam said quote, No thank you very much, no effing chance, mate. With that fat bloke from Kevin and Perry, James Corden is a knobhead, end quote. Clearly he doesn't like James very much, but no one really knows why. Maybe it's personal, or maybe he just doesn't like James's vibes or something. Either way, carpool karaoke with Oasis is never gonna happen. At number 4, Asia Argento and Rose McGowan. Sometimes it seems as though James Corden has trouble reading the room. Yes, he is a comedian, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be constantly cracking jokes because there is an appropriate time and place for comedy, and you have to be mindful of that. James's lack of respect for the Me Too movement is the reason why Asia Argento and Rose McGowan hate James Corden so much, because after he made jokes about Harvey Weinstein at the height of his public takedown, they never saw him the same way. Back in 2017, James was hosting a black tie event for AIDS research where he did a little comedy monologue that seriously fell flat. He made several jokes about Weinstein saying things like, quote, This evening is so lovely that Weinstein already invited it up to his room for a massage, and quote, It's been a weird week, hasn't it, watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Ask any of the women who watch him take a bath, it's weird watching Harvey Weinstein in hot water. Two Hollywood stars who were heavily involved in exposing Weinstein for his crimes, Asia Argento and Rose McGowan, took serious offense to James's jokes, and they had some harsh words for him, calling the comedian an effing piglet, and saying, quote, Shame on this pig and everyone who grunted with him." End quote. There are just some things that you shouldn't joke about, and the situation with Weinstein was certainly one of those things. At number 3, Pierce Brosnan. You know when you meet someone who just rubs you the wrong way? Well, this is apparently how Pierce Brosnan felt about James Corden because they had a run-in at a concert one time and it seemingly wasn't a pleasant experience. 
During an episode of The Late Late Show in 2017, James Corden spilled the tea about a celebrity that he thought was rude during their segment of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. That night's guest Khloe Kardashian asked James about his worst experience with a celebrity and James told the viewers about a run-in that he had with Pierce at a concert while with his wife. James said quote, I went to see you 2 and Pierce Brosnan was there with some friends and they left halfway through the gig to go off so me and my wife moved into this area and literally this arm went on here and pushed me out of the way. I looked at him like that and he didn't even glance at me. End quote. So basically Pierce left his section for a bit and James moved in but when Pierce got back he shoved James out of the way. There was never really an explanation as to why Pierce shoved James, but clearly he just doesn't like the guy. You don't always have to have a reason, but I just wonder what prompted Pierce to do that. At number 2, Patrick Stewart While at an award show back in 2010, Patrick Stewart exchanged some quips with James Corden and really dug into the way that he was presenting at the show that evening. James was hosting the 2010 Glamour Women of the Year Award, and when Patrick took the stage, he took the opportunity to criticize the way James had been hosting where he said, quote, When the presenters are up here and when the recipients are receiving their awards, don't stand at the back of the stage with your hands in your pockets, looking around as though you wish you were anywhere but here. End quote. James tried to quit back saying that the people accepting the awards should just hurry up. Then Patrick replied saying quote, From where I was sitting, I can see your belly. And that was right there at the back of the room. To which James then replied saying quote, You can see my belly and we can all see you dying right now. End quote. It was just a really messy back and forth situation, but you could kind of tell that Patrick was frustrated with James and that he just really doesn't like him very much. And finally, at number one, Hollywood. Now I know this isn't necessarily a celebrity, but I would argue that much of Hollywood doesn't like James Corden. Though yes, he's getting booked for a lot of roles these days, a lot of movie critics have some harsh words for the comedian. One of the most recent negative criticisms that James received from a number of sources came from his performance in the movie Prom. A lot of people didn't like his portrayal of the character, and many took offense because of the way the character was played because James seemed to have laid into a lot of gay stereotypes while in character. On top of that, James has been criticized for other roles like his character in the movie Cats and even his hosting of the Friends reunion. There are a lot of people who think that he's just doing the absolute most in Hollywood and it's not good, so a lot of people just don't like him for that.